welcome back to another episode of Shock Treatment with Mel and Maddie. We are so excited tonight because we have the amazing Kate Hodge joining us this evening. For Hello. some shenanigans. <laughs> it's been a while, so at least if we can see one another, it's, it can be this way for now. Yes, the new, the new normal. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to accept that yet, though. <laughs> oh, I know. I've gotten my first vaccination. My second is May 12th. I just had my second. Oh, how did so, you feel? Um, I got more sick after the first one. So they think I already had COVID and just didn't know it because they said people that um, have symptoms after their first shot had COVID. Interesting. Isn't that crazy? Yep. I, and I believe it too, because um, like two years ago, right before Thanksgiving, and it fits the time frame for when it first started getting talked about here. I was working in an urgent care and I had and all things I've never in my life had, I got strep, mono, and the flu, like all within a week and a half of one another. Oh my gosh, how fun. Yeah, it was a fantastic time. And then I go back to work and two days later, I have an upper respiratory infection. And oh my no God, girl, what, you totally had it. Yep. And what, and I had like right before Thanksgiving, no taste, no nothing. I just, I didn't want to do anything but sleep. So everything that are all COVID symptoms I had at that point in time, but they were just saying, oh, it's an upper respiratory infection and pumping me full of uh, different antibiotics because they couldn't find one that would like actually work and, you know, do its job. <laughs> wow. Yep. I think a lot of people after the, after the first shot, because I had the Pfizer one, I, my arm hurt, like when I got the flu shot and then the next day I woke up and I felt like I got hit by a train and my arm felt like I got shot with a gun and not a needle. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And then Saturday morning I woke up like nothing ever happened. Well, well, and, well if you got hit by a train, I don't think we'd be talking to you right now, Mel. No. I think you're exaggerating. We, we, we would be crazy. mostly ghostly then. Yeah. Mostly <laughs> ghostly. And I think a lot of people had the vid. I think that a lot of people were sick. And it was just in different different forms, you know what I mean? It got other people worse, but yeah, because yeah. yeah, I remember I had like a weird sickness two days. I had two days where I was like super, I thought I had food poisoning, but I almost think that's what it was. And uh, I was in bed for two days and, you know, it was just kind of that. But, yeah, so, it, like, it lingered. Some people it just like annihilated. Like I have a friend who's lost both parents in a week and a half. Jeez. Yeah, that's awful. It was just like, and they were, like in their 70s they weren't that old right. so yeah, that's what scares me because like my dad's in that age range and like yeah like, i know my dad's like 80, 86 yeah so. like and that's like the only parent i have so i'm like oh my god if something happens i'm going to the, everybody will be visiting me in the mental ward <laughs> <laughs> do you I'll be doing shock treatment from Butler Hospital <laughs> <laughs> i do i actually would love to i want a t-shirt that says shock treatment from Butler Hospital, where we do a live show from Butler Hospital. That'd be great. That would be cool. How cool would that be, Mel? You, you <laughs> That'd could be have, hilarious. You could have That's figured out the truth, the future in all these dark times. You got the key to happiness right there. <laughs> yeah, and, and hopefully the meds. <laughs> Dr. Giggles. Yeah, that seriously, that's me right now, Giggles. <laughs> <clears throat> so how have you been how have you been during this whole covid period of time with everything well we're we're doing good we just uh you know small family me my husband and stepson didn't really go anywhere except for like everybody else home depot i can't tell you how many different pieces of furniture i've stripped mm -hmm. and repainted <laughs> <laughs> i've been, I've been like, enjoying the pictures you've been posting of like your your this the camping trip that you went on last weekend and oh my god we're totally into camping now because that's total covid safe with our pop-up trailer so i mean we've we've had it pretty easy you know as you know groundhog day as it is it's you know no no one we know has been very much affected or i'm just glad to see that it, there's the end of the light end of the tunnel is coming thank oh, god i know oh yeah I never thought I would be the one to say that I actually am starting to miss some people. <laughs> some people. Some people. Yeah. <laughs> <Not everybody. laughs> so who wants to dive in first, Maddie? I know you have some stuff that you want well, to talk about. We, and I have yeah, stuff. We usually always kick it off with, you know, how it all started. You know what I mean? 
Uh, where did your your uh, your love? When did you ke- catch the old acting bug, as they say? That was, I think, um, it. My mom said that in 1977, we went to. It was like the Son of Sam week, the Son of Sam time, summer of the summer of summer of Son of Sam. Yeah, that's summer the summer I came into this world. Berkowitz. <laughs> And uh, we drove, we did a family vacation where we drove from California to New York and back. And when we got to New York, I guess I was like 11 and we saw the Rockettes. And my mom said that I said, I am urged to be on stage. (laughs) So I started doing ballet and I I did ballet through high school. And then I went to UCLA and started taking theater classes. And then I studied mime in France with, Marcel Marceau wow. and then oh, yeah. I gave myself a year after I got back from France to get to get an acting job which was quite naive and um lo and behold like I got a little acting I got a commercial and then I got Texas Chainsaw Massacre it was like my first role yeah and that so, was like that was such a great movie I mean you got Ken Foray, like it's yeah. just the, the, the cast you got to work with in that like oh my gosh amazing for your first film were you, a, were you a fan of uh, the franchise before signing up some people aren't Actually, which is cool which is cool which but, is cool i love like, cool. The, the shining but like the whole the sh- i was like I, the shining was really cool yeah and then i did you know then i did she wolf of london just about a you know couple almost a year after Texas Chainsaw, and then I did a, the infamous Fangoria article, where as a young girl in England doing She Wolf of London, someone they, someone did an article on me and from Fangoria, and I said I'm not really a horror fan. I don't like to be scared, and it was like I got such I was like, I was death threats. Yeah. It's a weird, well, it's, it's, the, it's a different audience now. You know what I mean? Yes. And I've, you know, I've ever since, you know, I've gotten in, then I did the hidden and then, yeah. I mean, now I, I mean, I love it. I, yeah. I can't wait. There's a scary movie coming out right now that I cannot wait to see. It's like a little girl and there's a doll. I don't know. something crazy. There's so many but new, I, yeah, there's so many new horror fans that they, 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 they can't really say like, if you, you, you know, you guys both probably felt, you know, enjoyed it around the same time you were a longer horror fan than they are they're just you know five years yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know what i mean yeah but my husband was from the beginning like all those slasher films yeah. he loved them all so hell yeah yeah was i was nice like you know i was a ballet dancer i was like and i'm so scared of blood but now i love it you're like did suspiria you, <laughs> did you yeah. feel like you were gonna get like typecast um by starting off in horror no, I was not. No, that didn't worry me at all. I was just like, I wanted to do. Uh, I would, I would have. If you kind of you Google my resume. There's not, there's not a job I'll turn down. Basically, like, my, I'm fa- totally- yeah. <laughs> my favorite film, Super Christian Two. Uh, you were part <laughs> of that. You were a part of that masterpiece. I love that film. I was, ma- I was in college when I shot that masterpiece. Yes. I have a tattooed. The poster is tattooed across my back, actually. <laughs> That's is that a, is it what it sounds like it is like a religious almost superhero movie? No, it's more like an educational film. For oh, okay, Christians. all right. I was gonna say <laughs> it was like don't don't um you know everybody was wearing clear masks like before anonymous and before yeah. COVID, and everyone was going to church looking very happy and wonderful, but but then they'd go home and their lives were a disaster. So yeah, it was about not being super Christian if you're not going to live the life. Cool. Yeah, I, I was it, like, well, you know. I, I thought it was the, the prequel to the Bible Man franchise. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wish. <laughs> we all do. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who, who's the? Yeah, I forget. I forget. Skippy. Skippy from Charles in Charge, I believe, was Bible Man himself. Maybe Skippy's not the right word. Yeah. Name, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll move on from this. <laughs> So yeah, the Leatherface film. How did how did that come about? Where you you know you got got involved with it? Just that. That was just you know you go out on auditions and uh-huh. see what happens. And uh, Billy Butler, I think, was uh, or William Butler, his stage name. It was between me and um, Gross, 
the redhead. What's her name? She's not gross. Marcia gross. <laughs> and um, and the producer said to Billy, who would you rather work with? And he he chose me because he thought I was like, I'd be a little bit more easygoing. Yeah. And we're friends to this day. And so it was sort of, you know, luck of the draw, luck of the audition, all that sort of synchronicity that comes together. And it's, yeah. it just worked out. And Jeff yeah. Burr was amazing. Of course, yeah. You know, when going into a friend, I know in the early stages, you know, going into a franchise like that, was there any type of fandom around that was like big hype waiting for the third one? You know what I mean? Like, I think I know nothing was, like today, yeah. nothing like today, of course, but like nothing. Yeah, no, there was a big the premiere was at the Chinese man in Hollywood on Hollywood Boulevard. And there was a big, big group of, you know, the franchise fans. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Jeff Burr also said on my resume, it said I worked with Klaus Kinski. And so that's kind of what pushed him to cast me as well. Of course, Klaus is, everybody loves him. Klaus Kinski from, he's yeah. The best. I, I the think I was an extra in a movie with him when I was in, in France being a mime. He came to our mime school and yeah. let us all be in his movie. So I'm like, yes, I worked with uh, Klaus Kinski. How I was know, it? Not really. <laughs> yeah did, did you get to see him on you so you got to see him on set and all that do his thing oh yeah he was, was nuts he, was he common you know well he wasn't was he was he you know in all doing the, the full the full he thing was, yeah going crazy yeah I, I i wish i could remember the movie but it was some crazy french movie where he was you know an older man losing his mind it was a big you know or it was i think it was a period piece i don't know i'm getting old i can't really <laughs> remember we were all in like peasant outfits. That's all I remember. <laughs> I support that. Right. <clears throat> it was pretty cool. Good time. <laughs> so, yeah. I was going to say, like, there's just there's one scene in that movie, in Texas Chainsaw, where I can't get your face out of my, the image of your face out of my mind. And it's the scene when you guys are at the gas station and the gas attendant takes your picture and he's harassing you. Like, the look on your face, you it was like, you legit wanted to, like, grab him by the throat and just, like, shake the living bejesus out of him. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, how did she not punch him in the face? Oh, my gosh, I know. He was so good, uh, Tom Everett. He was ad-libbing almost that whole scene. And it was just, he was just getting grosser and grosser. Mascara face, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm like, it's like I, I was like, wow, this is like he's like getting like I I said that like thought that too that he was getting like really involved with it, and I was wondering how much of it was ad libbed or if that was like actually scripted. Yeah, he did a lot of ad libbing, and he was you know when you think of today in this day and age, like the Me Too movement would have probably mobbed him and like <laughs> punched him in the face. Yeah. That that whole Me Too movement is gonna come up very shortly when we talk about uh, the episode of uh, Boston Legal that you did. <laughs> prostatot <laughs> the prostatot do you have one <laughs> no i wish i did <laughs> like, we literally me and my boyfriend literally just rewatched that episode because when we first went to look for it the episode that it gave us wasn't the episode it was supposed to be so we just rewatched it and i'm laughing i'm like the tartese dolls the prostatot prostatot i'm like <laughs> they look like little hookers i'm like this is great and i'm like <laughs> So my boyfriend's like, you have to ask her if she got to keep one of those dolls. Oh, no, I did not get to keep one of the prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> How was it being on set with James Spader? Because, like, he's, like, my new, like, I don't know why I never was in love with him before, but he's, like, my new love now. <laughs> I know why you weren't. <laughs> he was great. I mean, when you think about, and I remember people saying, you know, in those, that show at the end when he'd do those closing arguments, like the, it was like four pages of massive dialogue and he would just, da, 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 da. he did say, you know, he sort of is like that in real life. And when I was came onto set wearing something and he was like, I don't think, you know, if she's worried about these hooker like dolls, I don't think she'd be showing her cleavage. I think her clothes are all wrong. <laughs> so we actually changed my outfit. And I'm like, that's a really good point. I'm like, I want to look pretty. And he's like, if you really worry about slutty dolls, you wouldn't look like a slut. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, point taken. Let's, uh, let's put on a different outfit. I don't remember what I wore, but it was more like conservative. 
Yeah, you had on, it was like a, it looked like a, like a, almost like a sweater vest and then like a, a cardigan over it in the court scene. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And he was like talking about Abercrombie and, you know, taking your six year old daughter there with all the posters that they have up of the models and whatnot. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Really but, well written show, but that was really fun, and I got to you know meet William Shatner as well, which was yeah. like, yeah, he was crazy. He was great. I mean, he was great in the makeup room. He just told the greatest stories, and he was had just come back from a racetrack in Florida. Like he he flies everywhere all the time. Like he's never standing still. A lot of energy, uh, Captain Kirk. <laughs> I, I can't yeah. imagine being on set with two people that are as well known as the two of them, and especially with the atmosphere of and the whole vibe with that show like total sexual harassment like every time you turn around did any of that ever like make you feel uncomfortable or were you just get like getting a kick out of it um well there wasn't real sexual harassment happening no I know but like you know sometimes people even if it's like not serious they get uncomfortable with it just because they're not used to it or whatever you know like yeah I would just shrug it off because it's like it's a script or even yeah, if somebody's no. really doing it I'm gonna shrug it off unless they get like really the actors, it. But, the professional actors yeah but. yes yes you cannot you cannot take it for real life otherwise you'll end up oh, like but you know yeah but we know that but you know there's so many people that get so butthurt easily and think that these things that you know, these characters that people portray on TV are how they really are. So, know. you know, it's like total cancel, cancel culture with that, with some episode, with the episodes in that show. <laughs> yes. Like, you know, Dr. Seuss, everything's cancel, cancel. Yeah. Peppy Le Pew, like, come on. Peppy Le Pew is my favorite. I know. And like, like, how bad are you? How bad is, does your life suck when you're analyzing a cartoon skunk that badly? <laughs> no. he's, a, he's a skunk he brings black and white together you know what I mean there you go I like, yep. I like it's that I like that Matthew you know he's you, black you, and white and he's a skunk but he wants to be a cat he's like trans he's trans yeah. and he's black and white <laughs> yeah so he, he represents all things good right you know yeah they're really afraid of his movement that's what they're afraid of <laughs> Pepe Le Pew movement the rebel force of Pepe Le Pew <laughs> yeah, it's coming. You yep. got to work. You got to work on another show that I'm a gigantic fan of, Tales from the Crypt, which was great. You know, that was great. That was I, one of my like really early, early gigs. Yeah, Dead Right, I believe, was the name of the episode. Dead uh, Right. I was actually cast in Demi Moore's part. Oh, really? She just she turned it down and then she took it back. Oh, oh. is that? But I, did us play, a... I did get to play her best friend. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's one of my favorite episodes. I always loved that, the whole theme to it. It's, it has that um, morale to it. You know, it's one of the ones with the yeah. morale to it. Yeah, definitely. That that's a good yeah. one. And it was so weird because like that was probably 1989 or 90. Yeah. And um, I think, yeah. then in 1999, I joined the Beverly Hills Playhouse Acting School and Jeffrey Tambor was my teacher yeah oh wow yeah but then he got completely blackballed didn't he because of me too didn't he harass people yeah he I did think a show he did a show like that. he did a show where he, he was a transgender, a, a transgender woman and then he like tried to you know molest actresses <laughs> oh my yeah that's uh oh this screwed up world it really is around, <laughs> he's been around he's kicking around forever uh you know, he's yeah, he was a great teacher, though. Yeah, he was, when, you, know, when you knew him, he was a good guy. Yeah, yeah, he was very nice, very uh, knowledgeable about acting. Yeah, he definitely, I was started studying with him, and then, like, very shortly after, I got level nine because I, I mean, he's very focused on you know how to get your career back on track. Yeah, because I'd been doing so much television and I've been doing sitcoms and I was really doing well and I was just sort of you know hanging out making money and not really concentrating on on my craft yeah 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 but um yeah that was that was good did you guys see Nomadland I haven't seen it yet but it's yeah it's in my queue to watch 
Okay, see, like Frances McDormand is my spirit animal. Hell yeah. She's so good. And just, you know, she's getting older and she does these great, she's so good. I just want to plug her movie, even though I don't know her at all. <laughs> but of course, we all want to plug <laughs> her best movie. Friends. I want to, I want people to see her movie. I want to go to, I want to go to dinner parties with her and Joel Cohen. That's what Wouldn't I that be to. amazing? When I lived in New York, I used to see her all the time with her sons and yeah. her sons are gigantic. Yeah. She's just like drinking a coffee and her little skull cap. And she's just like, she was just so cool. <laughs> yeah yeah she'd be really cool to me she's been killing it forever yeah oh i know yeah always pop it up yeah the cohen brothers tie which is nice i always love the cohen brothers gotta love the cohen brothers raised in arizona fargo greatest 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 of all time yeah howard dooch who did that who did that episode of tales from the crypt i believe it's howard dooch or dooch howard deutsch or deutsch yeah how was it working with him? I know he doesn't, he did more like, um, like ro- romantic comedies and comedy type. Yeah. 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 He was great. He yeah. actually called me personally when Demi Moore took the role back. Yeah. Well, that's nice of him. That was sweet. Yeah. He was like, I'm so sorry, but listen, um, because she didn't realize it was a period piece. So she really wants to try out those clothes. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> It's all about the wardrobe. What I don't a great want reason, yeah. <laughs> and that was it was kind of wild because it was like that was what in well way before mobile phones. She had just had rumor. She had this gigantic uh, trailer, yeah. and she had one of those phones that looked like a Gordon Gecko phone. And yeah. she was like, she was like uh, so large and in charge, and she was like twenty seven. Was this? And I was first- I was twenty five, and I was like, this girl is like balls to the wall. Like she was so getting it done and yeah. I was, was it like intimidating to be on set with her well I was just like how can you be like so large and in charge and you're like a kid but then <laughs> I realized I was just really immature <laughs> yeah, Demi Moore is cool yeah Love she's Demi really Moore. cool go Demi Demi so anybody Demi. that can do a movie like striptease I, I'll give them all the credit in the world G.I. Jane she Come on, yeah. One. Yeah. yeah, she she's just got like a great catalog of work. <laughs> she got rid of she got rid of Bruce Willis for Ashton Kutcher. She was like, check please, and she got like the newer model. <laughs> yeah, I get. I I I don't know anything about that, but I and uh, that I assume that's a good thing, right? <laughs> I guess, except that it didn't last, and she kind of lost her mind. <laughs> We all lose our minds sometimes. Yeah. Yes. I didn't realize, I thought that there was an article in Vogue about, you know, how really, really traumatizing her childhood was. So it doesn't, it makes sense that yeah. she was so driven to get out of that. And then that it just all kind of went crazy. I mean, you can only have that sort of like energy for so long before you blow a gasket. Not that she's crazy, but right. you know, th- that she think- kind of, she had to like kind of, I, I needed to relax for a couple of years. I, yeah, I think there's a, I think there's a, like, a, like a, you work hard to get to try to achieve something. And then like, when you get there, you kind of realize that that that's, doesn't quite make you happy. You got to kind of right. figure out where, you know, you got to find happy with, within yourself type stuff. You know what I mean? So exactly. it's probably one of, one of those deals where she got everything and she kind of went crazy a little, maybe a little bit for a moment, just to, yeah. until she regained her bearings. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, it's that whole thing, you know, wherever you go, there you are. You can run and run and run, but eventually you say, you're though, with yourself. The, the breakdowns for older actress, I'm not, I, and I don't mean this in like a, a derogatory way when I say older actresses versus like I'm Britney very offended. Spears, you, got, you know, like Britney Spears beating up oh my God, and yes. shaving her head, you know, in front of the paparazzi or yeah. uh, Lindsay Lohan or, you know, Amanda yeah. Bynes. No, it's, it's tough for the ladies. That's why I'm like, that's why I love Frances McDormand so much is she's just like naturally aging and kind of going in the way of like the Judy Dench and the Helen Mirren where you just, you know, you just grow old gracefully and just keep doing kick-ass work. That's like my goal. Right. The Frances has one little thing that, that, that is an edge that she has, which is the comfort of knowing she'll always be in a Coen Brothers movie if she wanted to. And that must no- be nice. Knowing that uh, yeah. keep, keeps a little bit of the pep in your step. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but 
she's super talented. Yes. Um, she Wolf of London. You know what I mean? The TV series. Yeah. That was yeah. good times. There was yeah. two created by two big heavyweights. You know, Mick Garris and um, Mick Garris. Tom McLaughlin from um, Friday the 13th Part 6. <laughs> And, uh, which is uh, what I love Friday. I wasn't that. I love Friday the 13th part six. I just had oh, a choke in my throat. Like that, the little tickle, you know, for a second. I, I just had a choke throat. in my throat. I love both of those gentlemen. They're both great. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. That was super fun. Uh, I remember I was just at home with my dad for Easter and he was talking about, we were, he, he was like telling, asking about like back in the day when I was getting all these jobs because he like, He's like, I looked you up on the internet. He goes, you've been doing this for a while. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Gee, but I, I did bad. remember the, <laughs> the old story of like the Universal Studios, the Black Tower on the lot where you go to, you know, do your final audition to get the, see if you get the part. Yeah. And at the final auditions, it was me and there was like seven other girls. A lot of, I think all of them were blonde. I was brunette at the time. I don't remember anybody but Kim Richards. And... Then we did, we, we auditioned like the scene where we where we're asking the professor, like, how are we going to figure out, you know, why I became a wolf and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of a sweet scene. And I remember thinking they don't, how are they going to know if, you know, any of us can be a wolf? I was a mime in Paris. <laughs> so as I was walking out the door of the, the room where all the producers were sitting and I go, oh, and by the way, <laughs> oh. and I growled and I snore and I'm like, I can be a wolf. And I got the part. It's those little it's extra things. You always hear yeah. about those things, yeah. Yeah, so you got to do a little extra. We do, um, we do films over here as well. And I remember when, during an audition once, we had an actress come in who was going to play a mother. And uh, I remember she came in and, like, she brought silverware with her. So, like, at the, at the audition table, she started to put plates out in silverware. And I remember it was very effective. You know what I mean? That's you, great. Yes. You, you remember, little, you know, make them remember. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what it is. If they were met, they want people that are going to be memorable on screen. You know what I mean? So like if you la give a lasting impression with them there. I don't, think, I don't think they even thought of it. They probably thought, well, if she's a werewolf, we'll probably have like a stunt double. Yeah. But you can't just go instantly like from a normal girl and suddenly be a wolf. There's got to be a moment where she's, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, be, yeah. I'm kidding. I have a furball. <laughs> Transition. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you some you're sometimes you're doing the producers and the directors a favor. Like you guys didn't probably think about this. This girl's got to act like a wolf at some point. <laughs> that, that was so fun. That was eight months in Bristol, England, with an English crew and Welsh electricians, and it was probably the most. We shot six days a week. Monday through Saturday, like 14 hour days. And I don't ever remember being tired once. I was like, there you okay. go. Well, I was 24, so. Yeah. I would have been strange if I was tired. In a foreign land, doing what you love. In a foreign land, listening, to, starting to talk like everybody yeah. else. Would you like exactly. a cup of tea? Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. It was, it was awesome. You notice any big differences in the film crews or pretty much run the same way? Oh my God, no. I totally realized when I got back to the States because they turned it into love and curses. <laughs> and in America, they were like, we were filming in Burbank now and they're like, would you like a cup of coffee? Are you feeling okay? Do you need a chair? And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> in England, they're like, get the fuck over here. Get out of wardrobe, <laughs> you know? They took no shit. They did not care about me at all, but I kind of loved it because they're like, oh, shut up, quit complaining, you know? It Such was it totally different. Cup type of deal. <laughs> I think, Such yeah. It, I up, think... Cup. it was really, really, yeah. There's no uh, hierarchy in uh, England. The electrical guy is just as, just as important as the lead actress. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, I think. <laughs> it's okay, you're good. Oh, yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah. The MPAA yeah, would... won't come after us. So, yeah, that was <laughs> uh, eye-opening. And I, I think, thought, no wonder there's so many diva actors in America. They, everybody kisses their butts too much. I really think that that's why those directors do that. Because even a, a person who had an ego on set, if you if the director automatically or whatever is loud, you're going to second guess you having that ego to begin with. Like, you're not going to let it come out 
because you've already seen what you might have to deal with. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So like, it's kind of a pissing, you know, doing your territory almost from the get go. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, but you gotta, you gotta handle it appropriately. So you're not treating people bad, but you know, that dominant yeah. thing almost that in good. a way. I mean, maybe it's like the whole socialist and you know, like the socialized medicine, everything, everybody just felt much more equal. And I did, I did a, I did a, commercial in in france and it was the same thing there was no high there are no hierarchy yeah it's very very refreshing but every yeah well and everybody feels like they're you know appreciated their work you know their ideas and all that and it's a big collaborative thing it's gonna be funner yeah. and it's gonna be a better product at the end of the day yeah everyone's just chill it's the best way to be as they yeah. say in europe they they work to live where in america we live to work Basically, how's that, it is. How's that for a little pearl? I'm right? getting that tattooed on my chest. <laughs> That's going right here. Right on right the next chest. To, right next to Super Christian, Matthew. Hell Super yeah. Christian. Well, I got Super I, Christian's part twos on the back. <laughs> I actually right. figured I figured out a way that I if I if I stand in a mirror upside down, the bottom half of my legs become the twos in Super Christian too. I like that. <laughs> nice. Ain't that weird? Ain't that very weird? Fascinating. I love it. <laughs> All right, 1992 big film Ooh! oh yeah a weapon. believe yeah. it believe it yeah. yeah a little bit of that rapid fire coming your way absolutely you know? how'd that all come about with that film that was back back in the days before you know they packaged films and agents and managers cast things that was back when you had to audition got down to four girls screen test we had to do the scene with powers booth in the in the apartment we had to do the scene with brandon we had to actually film it yeah wow and uh it was an entire day poor brandon had to do that scene all day with four different actresses and god knows miracles and luck and who knows what but i got that part and i could not believe it how was it working with Brandon Lee? Because, you know, he comes from such an iconic background. Uh, you I, know. Just, I actually just filmed a documentary uh, and it was interviewed for a documentary about him. And the, the, the guy was saying, this is what everybody says about him who's worked with him. So nice, so down to earth, grounded, he, humble, just yeah. the sweetest, sweetest guy. Like we used to, before we went to Chicago to film, he's like, why don't you come to, you know, come to my house in the Hollywood Hills and we'll, you know, drink some tea and, and read lines. And he had this very like simple house and he was just so, so nice. And his yeah. fiance at the time was, you know, she's in the back gardening or something. It was just it, such a great guy. Yeah, so he great. been really cool. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was so sad when, you know, the story broke about I was in shock. Absolutely. I could not Absolutely. believe it. Oh my God. Yeah. I, but, I can only imagine where his career would be right now if he were still with us. Oh my God. He'd be huge. Yeah. Totally huge. It's one of the, you know, he'd have kids. Right now, he would have, he would have kids, if not maybe grandkids that would be doing like martial art films, I think. You know, yeah. they'd be like, They'd be kind of keeping it, keeping, keeping that alive. Like maybe, uh, you know, in America, if you will, yeah. that's yeah. a big, that name, that name. I mean, the, you know, know, part of the, part of the tragedy is that name disappearing. You know what is I mean? His, is it his, is it Bruce Lee's daughter that's doing the warrior on HBO max? I know Bru Bruce Lee's daughter was something to do with it. I don't know if it's yeah. like all of it, but I know she's a part of it. She wanted like she to fight Quentin Tarantino. Page, found an eight-page treatment that Bruce Lee had written, and she gave it to some people, and they sort of flushed it out. And it's now that series. So I'm like, that can't be his wife. It's got to be his daughter. Probably the, the daughter wanted to meet Quentin Tarantino in the dojo for a couple rounds, I remember, when they did oh, really? Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, because uh, she didn't think that her father was, like, portrayed correctly. She, Ooh. Like a bully. She thought he was kind of portrayed like a bully in the film a little bit, which yeah. I love. I love Bruce Lee, but I almost feel like Bruce Lee probably would have been a little bit of a bully, probably because his come up wasn't easy. And Absolutely. now that he's got, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like maybe not a bully, but 
you know, like a little rough around the edges, so to speak. Yeah. 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 That, that's cool. She's doing a flick, though. But if she gets married, she might lose that Lee name. So that that Lee name. No, oh, you can get married and keep your name. I Come know on, you man. can. I know you can. <laughs> it's like it's 2021. Oh, my God. 2021. Yeah, 2022. Yeah, I know. You like you had to think about that for a second there. I, was I, like, I, I when I was married, I kept my last name. That was like the best thing I did in that marriage. <laughs> okay. It was so much easier with the divorce. Maybe she'll be so in love. Maybe she'll be so in love with the man she'll want to take his last name. Only Maybe someday. I'm Maybe she'll change her last name to Tarantino. <laughs> but Melissa you know, Redford. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> Rapid Fire was the second to last film, I believe he did, right? It was right before, he did The Crow right after it. Yes, he was yeah. filming The Crow when he was killed, yeah. How, in the acting community, what was that like when that happened? When, when, that, when, when he, that, you know, the passing from The Crow incident? Oh, it was totally shocking. There's, I think there's a big, uh, the, poor, the poor actor that accidentally killed him. Accidentally did, I know, yeah. I know he you felt know, super big, guilt. Lots of, lots of uproar about, you know, you can't cut, corners when you're dealing with firearms you can't have the prop guy being the firearm guy you know right. there's a lot of a lot of uh regulation just adjusting i think happened after that did anybody ever actually like get held accountable for that or was it just one of those things that you couldn't really trace you well no you could no. you could i'm i don't know who uh like if brandon's family or fiance probably got some money out of whoever. Oh, I'm was sure. Paying. I'm sure. Yeah. But it's I don't think, that, like, think that the actor was never, you know, charged with murder or anything. Thank God. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's not his fault that it happened. Unfortunately, it's just a matter you know. of circumstances. I mean, you're told as an actor when you're point, when you're shooting someone on a film, you never aim at them. You always aim right. just side. But then they say action and everybody's running around and you've got this whole dance running and then you see the guy, you're not going to go, oh, I'm, I'm so in the movie. You're in the mood, right? Yeah, you get caught in the moment. He's like, oh, fuck, I, I wasn't supposed to aim at him. Yeah, I mean, that's oh, really awful. I, I can't even imagine being that It's guy. awful. That's terrible. Yeah, because I remember hearing that that gentleman, he, the gentleman passed away the, who did it um, by oh, accident. He did? Yeah, he passed away a couple of years ago, and I remember a lot of people talking about how like he carried that guilt with him to the day he died. I'm sure. I'm sure. I would be surprised if he's like a drug addict or something. I would be like, I know. I, I I'm sure that would have ruined me for from wanting to act or do anything ever again after. Yeah. Uh, it's a weird thing, you know. You can't. Tr you definitely can't trust props anymore at that point. You know right. What I mean? you it's like that whole idea, like you know. I saw this show about this uh, motocross bike rider who was going down this rocky road and he said, I shouldn't go over this rock, mm. but he did. Yeah. And he's paralyzed from the neck down. And he's like, and it's been, you know, five years. And he goes, and every day I think about when I was going towards that thing and I said, yeah. I shouldn't go over. I mean, I'd go crazy. Right. Yeah. I've gotten like to the I, point in my life where if my gut tells me not to do something, I listen because if I don't, girl. I end yeah, up yeah. getting myself in a lot of trouble. When, when I see <laughs> when I seen Rocky Road, I would think of Chunk from the Goonies, and then I would automatically not want to hit that. <laughs> I'd be like, the, the, the universe is trying to tell me something right no, here. No, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, rest in oh. peace, Brendan. Yeah. Sure. Have you have you been doing any acting during COVID or have you just kind of no the last thing I did well? was um the resident it was right before everything shut down. I did a guest spot on the resident and um then it, everything kind of stopped. I've been auditioning, but I haven't uh haven't booked anything since 2019, but I'm I'm hopeful. <laughs> trying to get yeah. trying to break out back. those shoes and get back into the the habits of auditioning again yes yes i actually did one audition like from my house where you know like a zoom audition yeah i was gonna say what's that what's that like because that's gonna be that's you know i know for us, awesome like, because then you you can you don't have to fly anywhere or drive mm -hmm. anywhere or park anywhere you, 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 you literally if you don't as long as you don't have to stand up you don't even need to wear pants 
<laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, but you do have to stand up. They always want to see that. Oh, can you can we see your whole body? It's like, mm. um, it's like Facebook profile pictures. Yeah, yeah. You can, you go, can I see your whole body, lady? <laughs> I don't even um, want to see my whole body, but I want to see yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but then, then you can uh, you can get the lighting perfect and then you can actually talk back and forth. You want me to do it a different way or whatever like that. So it's yeah. going to be a brand new world. They're actually building houses now with Zoom rooms, which are, should just be called offices with the camera in them. But So in other words, it's going to be like being on Big Brother. Kind of. Like, <laughs> when they, when yeah. they go in and make their videos like at the end of each episode and talk about everything that's going on in the house. It makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it may, makes yeah. Back to the Future 2 more of a reality. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, they yeah. Have, he has that scene where he's talking to the boss, played by Flea, I believe, by Red Hot Chili Peppers, and, like, fires him and gives him the printout. It makes sense. We'll be talking to the aliens through the Zoom room. The Zoom room. The there's Zoom. A, there's a, a spirit, the spiritual world people believe in, a like, a, a spirit, almost a spiritual Zoom room where they have, like, a, a room they go into and do their, they're reaching out. I'm gonna reach out real quick. You did uh, eight episodes, I believe, of uh, Silk Stockings. Yeah, baby. Hell yeah! Now that's a fun show. I I I remember watching that back in the day, the USA Network, back when the USA Network was killing it with you know the good old WWF back in the day, and even uh, little... Canal Productions. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Up all night. USA is yeah. up all night. Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I did a renegade. I did a silk stocking. A lot of silk stockings. Silk stockings are always always being a different person, which is kind of funny. Silk, <laughs> silk stockings is like the triple X files, right? Right. There you go. The dirty, <laughs> slutty X files. It's uh, that guy. I always wished I was as handsome as that guy. I forget his Rob, name. Rob Estes. Yeah. yeah. Whatever came of that? Whatever happened with him? He's. he's I don't know. I think he's still working. I, I still see him from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. And his little sidekick, I can't remember her name, but I was like, these are the tiniest, most beautiful people in the world. Yeah. I'm like, and I always play like the giant campaign manager or like, hi, I'm the tall coroner. <laughs> <laughs> you little cute detectives, give me some evidence. <laughs> I'll put you in my pocket, Rob Estes, and we'll go find the killer. <laughs> That's a spinoff show. Right. I support that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's that's going way back. You know what I mean? If they wanted to do a reboot of anything that you have been in in your career, what would you want to see rebooted? She Wolf Two, where I'm like the mother of the baby wolf lady. Hell yeah! How I think it'll be fun. One season of it. It was like an experiment with uh, Universal and HTV, a British company, and. Uh, they split the costs of these three shows. I can't remember what the other two were. And I, my uh, She Wolf was the only one that was filmed in England. But the thing was, they found all these titles, the rights they had to titles of things. She Wolf of London was a movie in the 40s, I guess. Yeah. And so they're like, well, we own these titles. So let's just, you know, make some TV shows out of them. And then She Wolf of London was so different than Tales of Ta Love and Curses. And then all they all just fell apart, and they're like, "Forget it." And I'm like, "But, but, but." And then there was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I'm like, "Told ya." <laughs> this is around the time that, that Ron Perlman had that Beauty and the Beast show, that was kind of right up a, a, along. Yep. Those yeah. Lines. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember my mom and dad watching that as a kid. Beauty and the Beast. I remember that. Wasn't that Terminator Girl? Yeah. Yep. 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 She was in it too. And uh, yeah, that was a good, that was good. His, I remember his, his makeup job was really great. I mean, you can always tell it's Ron Perlman, no matter what they, no I matter know. what they put on his face, you always can tell, yeah. which is a great thing. We love Ron Perlman. Yes. He's kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He really yeah. is. Yeah. He's like, uh, imagine, I'd love to see them do one of those face swap things where he was, term, you know, Ron Perlman in Terminator 2. That'd be like, imagine that what movie. That'd be nice. Yep. That would be nice. That would be good times. Ron Perlman would love to see that as well. I believe so. And I would love doing what we would all love. Yes. Um, I want to see another Hellboy with Ron Perlman. I was upset he wasn't in the last one. I know. What happened? What are they saying? I don't know, but they, they, they really should have 
had him come back for that. Because blame blame that Stranger so Things. Bad. Blame Stranger Things for oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, last yeah. Hellboy movie. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, got, you, got, you got to work on the great Xena Warrior Princess, you know, very, yes, very famous yeah. actor Alexander Hawk around these parts is a gigantic fan of that show. He wanted to say hi. Oh, hi. That was really fun. Yeah. Lawless, amazingly sweet and nice. Um, Talking to me, you know, like you know, to go back to the t earlier with like a real, like a real independent woman type vibe. You know what I mean? Like she is a strong, oh, yeah. independent superwoman almost. You know, she was uh, before they, before yeah, before before they brought back the superwoman film, right. the Wonder Woman Super deal. They should have had Lucy girl. Lawless. Yes, Zena Warrior Princess. I remember that was in the '90s, and every gay bar that was like a you know gay girl bar. Yeah. Had her play, had that show playing all the time. Of course, hell yeah! <laughs> like bounce, come out, but you know, <laughs> killing men with her little stardust or yeah, star, <laughs> star scissor thing. Hell yeah! That's yeah. one of the uh, UPN. I think it was like that. That that like created UPN. UPN. Yeah, that was yeah. like the bread and butter for UPN for a long time. Uh, Hercules, Hercules, you know, and Zena, yeah. yeah. Those, yeah, and they they flew us all to New Zealand for like a week worth of work. Wow! It's like it takes a week to fly there. Not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> one one of my favorite filmmakers of all time, Mr. Sam Raimi, was a big part of that film. Uh oh, did you did you by any chance get a get a chance to have any dealings with Sam or? I don't think so. I think I was at the same barbecue as as him once, because Billy Butler was friends with Sam Raimi and. The Evil Dead Kid. God, I can't believe I can't remember his name right now. Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. Yes. I love how you call him the Evil Dead Kid. That's great. <laughs> the, the Evil Dead. I, kid. I, I, everybody's had a name so far, and I love it. <laughs> so, like, I, they're probably calling you the Texas Chainsaw Girl. <laughs> yeah. I'm very, I'm very jealous. I wasn't at that good go. TCM Three Chick. What was go. her name? She Wolf Girl. <laughs> I'm gonna envision Mel and Maddie there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think really hard and put us in the background eating hamburgers and hot dogs. With Sam Raimi, he's a huge yeah. Sam. Sam Raimi. Raimi's given, he, he's, he's giving me advice. Really? And he's saying he, he wants to Where be on the it? show. Believe it or what's not. He, what's he doing these days? Everything. Sam Raimi's uh, on top of the world. Nice. Tell him I need a job. Tell him I can do anything. Right. I will. <laughs> Yeah, I, they, uh, I feel I feel very happy that you thought that I talked to him for a second there. Oh, <laughs> I, you're a good hey, actor. Ray, I totally believed you. He's I'm I wish trying, well well I am I'm of trying course. To do my he's Demi, over. my he's, Demi Moore networking thing. Like, hey, call me. Have him call we're, me. We're doing a sleepover tonight after the show. Actually, I'll set Wait. it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Ray, oh, Sam Raimi. He, he's one of those like horror. Um, I guess. Uh, success stories if you will that just kind of like started in horror it went to the extreme heights of hollywood where you know like the spider-man movies the first like the right. really good batch was him and he did like yeah. the, the wizard of oz movie i think he's got um i think he's doing like world war uh like some big zombie like war of the movie. world kind of thing again Yeah, i think he's doing something like that and he's had his finger like as far as like the bigger horror he's had his hand within all the good mainstream horror for the like since he came out till now he's always had his hand in horror like in orson welles of horror in a heavy way yeah well yeah he, much cool. like the much like the cohen brothers their their, their you know their style is the same yeah. a lot and very cool very cool ethan cohen was an assistant editor on evil dead 2 and then they did the oh. hubsucker proxy together I wouldn't Ooh, I say that that, movie. Uh, the great movie. I wouldn't say they stole from Mr. Raimi, but they definitely were heavily influenced by Mr. Raimi. Interesting fun facts, Mr. Fisher. In, in, yeah, in France, very good Joel, Joel, Francis, and Sam Raimi all shared an apartment together when they all moved to California. Wow, so he's all, like you're like the genealogist, like tracing the contact. I told oh, you, no, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. <laughs> he's he's you, peeking in the window at night, you know, to make you know to see what they're doing. <laughs> if they were local, I probably would. <laughs> Careful what you say. I listening. know. <laughs> hey, 
standing in court next to him is just the same as standing in a cookout next to him. <laughs> true, true that. As long as you're not getting handcuffed. I can, I can bring a hamburger in my pocket. You know what I mean? We'll figure it out. Yeah, you're just going to look like that character from uh, Popeye as you walk into the courtroom with your burger. <laughs> After I've been in prison for a couple of weeks, I'll be looking like Popeye with my eye all cocked out. I'll have a glass <laughs> eye by then. Yeah. They beat my real eye out of me. <laughs> I looked at the wrong person. <laughs> tragic. It was a tragic story, Mel. Mel never came to visit me either. That's the worst part. Yeah. <laughs> Horrifying. Yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't allow me in because of COVID. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true, yeah. So have you used this time to, to do anything that you normally wouldn't do? Have you, like, decided to take up, like, yes. writing? And, I'm taking or... up carpentry and sewing. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm reading I'm reading a lot. I'm just doing stuff that I never really had time to do before. Reading books and... You know, I'm about Been to read watching um, shows on Netflix. <laughs> oh my god. I got into this like total black hole of English detective shows on Netflix. Yeah. I can't even remember the names of them now, but they were all so good, like Breakwater and yeah. it's all these kind of murder mystery things. Mm -hmm. And um yeah. I've been doing the same thing as everybody else is doing. Yeah. So I'm sure, I'm sure other people have been more productive than me. Probably Demi Moore has produced some things by now. Um, <laughs> There's a new but, man. Uh, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to, I'm, you know, I, someone asked me if I was interested in like doing some teaching, <clears throat> but I don't know if I'm qualified for that or patient enough for that. Um, <laughs> but I'm just really hoping for that, you know, the auditions to get kicking back up and with all these new... Um, platforms you know netflix hbo max and mm. i think i've got i've got like high hopes that you know the third trimester of my career is going to be fun i, I think have so. no doubts about that because you know you're everything you've been in or been a part of is not like it was something that ended quickly like everything everything's still carrying on now so you know it's good for everybody no matter what age you are you know you get to introduce well i get to introduce my nephew you know to horror movies that's been my new thing working uh, into that at the right age of five because that's how old i was so <laughs> we tested yeah, the yeah. waters with um the <clears throat> monster squad and you know um What's that one with Fred Savage and Howie Mandel? The Wizard? The little, oh, no, no, Wild Monsters. Little monsters. Yeah, he's no, all no. about the monsters right now. So I'm slowly introducing him. But like he was two weeks old when we brought him home from the hospital. Like two weeks old and home from the hospital. And I'm sitting there watching Texas Chainsaw movies with him. Like right <laughs> beside me in his bouncer. <laughs> Awful. It's terrible. That's awesome. This is this is why I'm not a parent. <laughs> <laughs> apparently yeah. apparently yeah. yeah that that's yeah. that's to bring it back to the brandon lee too i want to say that was you know really going full circle i was adding everything in with that there you go everything 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 so is, yeah. your, is your husband is he an actor too or is he no he's an way IT off guy. the grid on that yeah way off the grid no uh, it tech IT technical network manager or something like that. Hell yeah. <laughs> so he's more on the nerdy side. Not that yeah. that's a bad thing. Uh, he, well, like, he, was, he was in a band when he was, you know, younger, out of high school. You know, he's got tattoos, heavy metal, oh, IT. Yeah. So he fits yeah. into he fits into the horror category. Like with that. Yeah, happens. no, he loves, he loves horror. Yeah, he's always been a fan, I remember you saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's it's, always been a fan of it. If you could find the patience, I say definitely teach a course. You know what I mean? Don't let, don't, yeah. Be a mime. I don't see why you can't teach a class. What's funny? Yes, uh, I don't know. Yeah. There was something, there was something like, hey, come teach at this school. All you have to do is, you know, pay the rent on the building. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> all I have to do is pay the rent on the building. What am I getting out of it? Are you going to pay yeah. me so that I can pay? Yeah, there was some building? sort of like, yeah. And if you get a lot of students, then, you know, then they'll pay you. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm, I'm building a school now? No. It's a government program. I've, I've yeah. seen some actors <laughs> during this COVID period of time that 
they've started teaching acting classes via Zoom. And, you know, you send them $150 or whatever through Cash App and you take this one day class that's like eight hours. And, you know, you get an acting gig when you're done, supposedly. Wow. <laughs> I think that's that's very helpful. I think, you know, being people being able to talk to, you know, people that they look up to in the medium, I think is actually like, you know, even if just the, you know, just the fact that they're getting that attention from people's a boost, even if they're not really learning, hopefully they'll learn something. But even if they're not really like taking in a whole bunch of knowledge, the yeah, fact that. Just, yeah, just yeah. the experience in yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's big. That's a big. I'll thing. think about it, Melissa. <laughs> oh yeah, and if you have, if you have, a, I'll be one of your students. If experience, <laughs> okay. if, yeah, I, yeah hard, if experience ever, if that ever made you go second guess anything, we have people in Massachusetts that do background on like an Adam Sandler movie, and they try and teach classes on acting. I love oh it. I right, love it. right, I love right. it. Oh, it's the greatest. It's like they're, they're... I was in a movie with Robert Redford. Okay, I was in the train station in the second scene. Yeah, I played a <laughs> pair of teeth. I played a pair of shoes in that yes. Robert De Niro movie. <laughs> right, right. I know I people was... that do background. We love all yeah. background actors. We're not giving hard time. I do. A lot yeah, God, we, we lost without extras. They so are I the get... background the backbone. They are the. They are the. They fill the frame with life and and joy. I just love to hear them get crazy sometimes. Yeah, there have been some cuckoo birds, but they're mostly wonderful people. What's been the craziest serious. thing you've had happen to you on set when you were filming something? Like with the background actor? With anything in general, background actor, just like totally off the wall moment that like made well, I think everybody I was, just I was stop in filming, I was filming a TV show up in Canada and on this remote farm and uh we all went i was talking you know i, I talked talk, i talked to everybody did it then i was telling you know so i told someone that so came up in some conversation that my fit what if my if i had to have a favorite candy what would it be and i was like i don't know i guess between like bit of honey and baby ruth i don't know so we finish and i get back to my hotel room and on my hotel room bed on the pillow bit of honey and a baby ruth that's kind of creepy yeah it was kind of creepy and, and then i remembered and then the next day we would all went back to this very remote farm and i said it i said it to the makeup artist i'm like because I, I remembered the guy and i'm like he's a little you know he's sweet a little weird but you know he's not hurtful or anything and the crew and cast parking lot was you know four miles down the road and the makeup artist was like, oh, no, 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 no. This is unacceptable. This is, you know, he got in your room somehow. I'm like, oh, no, maybe he had someone put it in the room. Yeah, and... he probably had like housekeeping or something. Yeah. That's and still... the next thing I know, I'm like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And then the next thing I know, I'm finished with makeup. I go out and I see this poor little kid walking like 14 miles back to the parking lot. Like they kicked him off the movie. You know? Oh. Oh. Oh, but I remember kid? that was like that was my I was like me 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 I was like a little scared but then yeah, I remember, yeah. but you know God there's lots of other kinds of crazy things that happen but I can't think of anything that really came to mind. So no juicy stories about actors being crazy or you know we've we've had we've had like Mick Strawn on the show and he told the, like this great story about like when they brought out the prosthetic for Boogie Nights and. You know, just like <laughs> come in with a paper bag and they just threw the giant penis on the table and you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, it's like Anthony Perkins being high on the set of psycho or he's like doing acid or something. He was doing acid, yeah, that was fun. Oh wow. Yeah. Gosh, I wish I had a cool set. Of... I think powers powers booth talking about you know, filming in the seventies was probably my first, like my, yeah, you know, oh, man, we were shooting South by Southwest. And, you know, we wouldn't come to the set without doing four or five lines of Coke. And, really? Yeah. He said they were the whole time in the seventies. He goes, there was nobody that wasn't doing cocaine, like just right out in the open. He yeah. goes, it was a wild west. I'm like, that, that makes sense. I mean, easy writer. You think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Well, that's back when, you know, they thought cocaine was just good for you. It's like vitamins. I thought you said North by Northwest for first. But the, the, South by South. Was it I was going to say, when I, think of, when I think of the actors on Hitchcock sets doing lines of Coke, I mean, I guess it's not that, it's not impossible. You know what I mean? No, no, it's no, probably no. realistic. 
but I, I assume that to be more of like alcohol and you know drinking and maybe a little uh, yeah. a little pain pill or something. Oh, yeah, uppers and downers. That was the Judy yeah, yeah. Garland. Yeah. I need my blackies, my ruby. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just I couldn't imagine, you know, always feeling like I needed to be on something in order to be able to like do my scene. <laughs> well, like, they don't, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't be able to focus. Like I get high, I, I smoke a joint and I'm like, my mind is either one of two things. I'm like hyper cleaning everything or I'm knocked out. Like there's no right. way to clean. Right. So it's well, like, I couldn't even imagine being on anything else and like running my lines and doing, shooting a scene. I know. Well, I think it was just, they were just used you know, to it. In their twenties, <laughs> drinking, doing drugs, and just wow, you know, crazy kid, crazy dude. Living the life. Yeah. yeah. You know, long I mean, Dennis Hopper, my God. Oh my, Dennis Hopper is the best. Another favorite. <laughs> awesome. I love that. Rest in peace, Dennis Hopper. Right? Yes. He did a song with the Gorillas. I was listening to that earlier today, where he does like the the spoken word over a Gorillas song, which is really good. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper was great. Did you ever get a chance to meet Dennis Hopper? No, I never met him. I never mm. met all those like. Oops, I keep kicking my thing. <laughs> I, I do it too. Where it's like it's such a bad thing sometimes. Like you'd be in the middle of a great conversation, and then I kick my screen, and all you see is the monitor. Yeah. And <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, Dennis Hopper was like iconic, and he was one of those guys that was a super talent, but was known to like party hard. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? That's a, that Powers booth. It was pretty cool hanging out with him a lot. Uh, yeah, he was cool. Uh, rest in peace. Is he, he? Did he pass? Yeah, he passed. Like a year ago? Passed. I'm the yeah. only one left in that movie, I think. So maybe the detective. <laughs> um, and Zhao, and the bad guy in that. Oh, God, I've not easy getting old i remember i forget everybody's names i should do more research before these things research on myself (laughs) (laughs) like post-it notes like who did i work with (laughs) who haven't you worked with at this point that yeah it's It's like kind of the the kate kate hodge bacon six degrees of it's funny you say that because you said the same thing when I did the Scream Queen panel with you and Felissa and Danielle at Scaricon. <laughs> that that's that right. Same that's right. came up while we were doing that. I think it was right before we had you guys all scream and see who had the best one. Yeah. <laughs> and it was definitely Felissa. Yeah, we, we we lost we lost control of that with with all the talk about penises and whatnot. That was one of the best talk back panels I've ever been to. I was like, what? I, and I was so nervous to do it. I'm like, oh my god, they're putting me they're putting me in charge of this. Are they crazy? That was one of your first <laughs> ones, right? Yeah, it was one of my first panels. I was like, the women crazy. of Scream Queens. Yep, that was fun. I was like, if I'm going to do this, I want this panel and this panel. Like, they let me pick. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> so I, I picked because Felissa was on it, and I've had a lot more, you know, meetings and opportunities to talk with her. So, like, there was a little bit of a comfort level there. Yeah. And once I started talking with you and Danielle, it was like, wow, like, this is going to go really great. And I feel- Oh my God, you were like a total natural, like Bob I felt- all this group over. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about all that, but I appreciate the compliment. I felt, <laughs> what I felt, who I felt bad for was my poor co-moderator in that. Like, he, he must have been like, oh my God, what is going on right now? Oh, without the penis stuff. <laughs> Mike? <laughs> like, he, he was like, but the only thing he was excited about was when I- had gotten the group picture at the end of the weekend with him and all of us. He was like, dream come true. (laughs) Melissa somehow managed to get all of these ladies to take a picture with me. I'm like, dude, if you don't ask, you'll never know. I just like, I somehow was blessed with the gift of gab and sometimes it benefits me. (laughs) He he owes you a big favor. (laughs) He was like, oh my God, I got to take a picture with the sexiest women at Scarecon. <laughs> there you go. So but bless sick. his heart. Hell yeah. <laughs> and you but did I, you you did that gigantic favor for him. Does he does he share our episodes? 
No, but he loves to share that picture. <laughs> I'm sure he does. I don't blame him. I can't give him a hard time for that. <laughs> how does how does your stepson feel about having you has his mom and your career? Well, I think because you know he was 11 when we got married. He's and now he's 15. So you know, 15 year olds. They mm -hmm. don't really, he doesn't really care. <laughs> right. He thinks it's pretty cool. He's like, yeah, all my friends are famous. And I show him a picture of you. They don't believe me until I show him a picture. So it's kind of cool. picture does he show him like something from like Texas Chainsaw Massacre with like when a fight scene? That, that, the fight no, I think they just, doing. they just like Google, like Google images. IMDB yeah. probably. That's yeah. where everybody goes. Yeah. Yeah, that's my, that's that's my first my my first stop when I'm researching people for the episodes that we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fight yeah. scene with Ken and RA on on Texas Chainsaw Three. Mm -hmm. How was it being on set and like kind of being in the middle of all of that? <laughs> it was kind of like I it was a little chilly. I remember that. I kind of just wished I had like a bag of popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> It was all very choreographed very well by Kane Hodder. Oh, yeah. And uh, went pretty smoothly. R.A. is a character. I'm sure you've all met him. Yeah. I've met R.A. once. And he's I was kind of I was kind of intimidated because he's such a big dude. And, yeah. you know, he's got that whole he's got like, like that whole Hells Angels biker he appearance. Vibe going, yeah. So it's like. Do I? It was the same thing with Kane when I first met Kane right. too. I didn't want to approach him for the same reason. He just looked so intimidating. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, you know, so like, and then they're go. like Melissa, little teddy bear. Melissa, Melissa comes yeah. to Melissa's rescue yet again, and she introduces me to both at different conventions just to like help me break the ice because I didn't want to go up. And then you you start talking to them, and they're both actually you know giant teddy bears. Oh yeah, so sweet. Yeah, so sweet. and. It's like, you know, like they say, you can't judge a book by its cover, you know, but like yeah. it looks so intimidating. And like RA, my, my picture with RA is him grabbing me by my throat. Awesome. And that kind of like, I had just gone through something that, that was like, oh my God, I'm going to have a heart attack. I feel the anxiety <laughs> attack coming on. <laughs> and I didn't want to say it just because it was such a dope shot. But after the picture, I told him, and he's like, oh my God, honey, if you had just said that, I wouldn't have even done it. And oh, I'm like, like no. you didn't, you I didn't, didn't ask him. him. I was like, that picture was just so great that I just like went you with it. You me, I now have <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the gimmicks yeah. though. Kane does the same thing. He'll choke you. He grabs your throat for the picture. Oh, okay. They well, used to at least. He's like he's, you know, Jason or whatever. Yeah, yeah like, like one of his hands like is like, like can palm my head like a freaking basketball like i'm not messing with <laughs> neither one of them <laughs> i wonder how right, many people right. i wonder how many people actually try to like fight with them because they're the big tough guy in the film you know what i mean like they're big guys in the films like wrestlers i know get a lot of hard times in the outside world right it's like oh you're a tough guy huh yeah so i feel i bet they probably get their people to bump into them for hard times every now and then you know I would think so. Yeah, definitely. Well, and they are sweet guys, you know what I mean? Which is, it's funny, you'll yeah. see that a lot of, um, you know, those some musicians back in the day that have been known to make like violent music, but like they're very soft spoken and, you know, because they yeah, get on like their... that. Like the lead singer of Metallica is like right. a complete, like soft little poet guy. But when mm -hmm. he sings, it sounds like, you know, Satan is coming out of his yeah. mouth. Because <laughs> yeah. they, they get it, they work all their demons out in their music, you know what yeah. I mean? So, like, yeah. in, artistically instead of, so that's why it's so uh, aggressive. But then you yeah. see them and they're all like puppy, puppy dogs. Yeah, it's fun. That's the, that's the great thing about entertain being in the entertainment industry i think because like if you're if you're dealing with other issues it's a great way to channel all that energy in a positive Absolutely. light instead of you know being one of these people that you are constantly seeing on the news going into places and shooting innocent people and yeah you know, like it's just insane right now like mm -hmm. <laughs> on a daily basis i'm like this world is every done. day every day i'm like what is going on 
I can't even imagine being a mother and having a child having to, and, you know, worrying about them every single time they leave the house, you know, and wondering, are they going to come home or am I going to get a phone call? Like that would drive me absolutely batshit crazy. Yeah. Like, and I'm already batshit You're bat never leaving crazy. the house. You're never <laughs> leaving the house again. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm going to make you a crazy. Zoom room. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom room, a panic room. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think with? What do, what do you ladies think we're going to see in the future as far as like films go? You know, the, the, you think you'll get like, uh, you know, when certain people eras come out of certain times, the, the mood will be like different. Do you think that like we might be more, might be seeing more violent movies or more something because of people just kind of being cabin fevered up and by themselves, the writers, you will, you know, in writing these crazy things? I don't know. I wish you. Matthew, you can figure out what this movie is that they keep um, promoting. It's a new horror movie. It looks like a Beetlejuice comes out of a closet. Mommy, I'm coming down the stairs. There's a new horror movie coming out mm -hmm. that looks really cool, kind of like The Ring. Okay. And then you have things like Nomadland, which yeah. are just fully and strictly about humanity and nature. Mm -hmm. So I think it's always been, and it will continue to always be, a huge diversity of different yeah. kinds of movies. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. More, you know, more gentle movies, like to go in with the horror movies, which I love. Mm -hmm. But I just think like, I'm hoping that people will watch No Man Land to just take a breath. She doesn't have, like, she doesn't have a cell phone. She lives in her van. It's just, it just makes you realize we, we gotta take some time just to breathe once in a while, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing, you know, people always say Hollywood makes like terrible movies. Every now and then they come across, they'll make like a good life movie. You know what I mean? Where you yeah, everybody like can... I finally saw Parasite. That was a great film, you know. Oh my God, that was so cool. Mel doesn't was, think it, was... it should have, Mel doesn't think it should have won the Academy Award, but she she thought it was all right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not at all the story you think it is. It's the story of, you know, it's kind of like, how fucked up humanity can be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's, yeah. Not, it's not a monster. It's actually the human beings are the monsters. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it takes a M. Night Shyamalan twist and then it goes into like this weird midsummery horror Doesn't in the middle of the day. Yeah. M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> dinga dunga. He's got yeah. anyone coming out, right? Isn't that the, the twist? Quiet? Too, right? He, he's telling everybody he is, but the twist is he's not really having a movie come out. Oh God! That's the of twist. Course. That's the twist. Him. I'm That's sure. So yeah, uh, people. Love, he just did those. Um, well, actually, that uh, that 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 follow up to Unbr the Mr. Glass movie I heard wasn't a big success. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't my favorite of the three. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't my favorite of the three. Split was good. I like Split. I did like Split. Somebody told me it was a script that he he like had for like 10 years though. Like it was from the era of when everybody was loving him. So that's why it was so good. Oh. That's what I heard, yeah. That could be true. And then uh, then like that 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 glass one. You said you like glass, Mel? Yeah, I liked I liked glass. I mean it wasn't all that horrible, but yeah. it wasn't my it wasn't my favorite of I gotta get, I gotta watch it and give it a chance because uh, it either if 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 it was an old if, if Split was an older script, it could you know, Glass could have been rushed just to kind of make money. But if it's good, Glass, Glass, they call me Mr. Glass. That, they call me Un Mr. Glass. Unbreakable. The first Unbreakable is really good. Yeah, that was cool. You know, I love. Oh, um, it was funny because I wasn't a fan of that when I first saw it, and then when they released Split, I went back and rewatched it because it had been like a good 10, 15 years since I had seen it, and it was a lot easier to watch for me, and I like I enjoyed it more. But definitely, of the three, Split is my favorite just because I like how they developed the characters, and you know, you got to see more of why Glass was the way he was. There was a lot of yeah. bad, yeah, there was, I felt like when Split came out, there was a lot of really bad horror movies coming out too. So like the fact that it wasn't, yeah, wasn't I know. bad was what made it, you know, every every now and then you'll get a dose of something that's might not be the greatest thing, but everything else is kind of bland. So it seems so great. I think Split yeah. was kind of like that, but it's a good movie, but I think it yeah. was, people were like, M. Night Shyamalan's back, baby. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know yeah. about that. 
Yeah. Could be another airbender soon. <laughs> Have you had yeah. the opportunity to check out them on Amazon Prime yet? The what? I haven't. The show Them? No, it, I have not. Amazon Prime? Yeah, that is one you definitely should check out if you are looking for something new to binge. Okay, I'm going to write that down. I've, yeah. I've just finished reading the book, The Running Foxes. I like that. Written in the 30s. My father sent me this book. Hell yeah. I love Very the Very cute, though. Those are the I don't know. I've been doing a lot ah! of reading myself. Oh, <laughs> she just scared herself with knocking her camera over. <laughs> it's coming to attack you. It's like all the wires are coming next to me, so. Attack and I, keep, I keep sitting on the wires. Uh, them, them yep. on Amazon Prime. All right, it's I got it. It's definitely, it's definitely one of those ones that you're gonna be. You're probably gonna message me and go, "What the hell did you make me watch?" <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a spinoff of um us, right? No, it's actually not oh. even, it has nothing to, Jordan Peele has nothing to do with that, but the little oh. girl that was in us in oh. this show. They're capitalizing oh, okay. on it. They're not yeah. giving Jordan Peele a check, but they're capitalizing on his story, probably. It was, guy. whoever, the guy that wrote this show, it was really well written and really well done. Like, I, I, I don't know how many times I was like, oh my God, holy shit, oh my God. Like, I literally had to stop after episode four to kind of like soak it all up. And because there was such a what the fuck moment that cool. it was like, yeah. Oh my God, that sounds like right up our alley. Oh I mean, yeah, it's, 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 like I said, there's some stuff on there that's like, oh my, you know, you would think that, especially with everything that's going on in current news. Yeah. It's like, it's like how the hell did this one slip through the cracks? And you know, <laughs> how did this not get canceled before it even aired? Just because right. the subject matter is, it's a lot of it's really hard to swallow and you know watch and it's like just i can't believe that people other than the you know the the malevolent forces in the home type of deal but like <laughs> main story aside it's like i can't believe that people actually had to deal with this kind of thing okay I'm gonna so, take your word for it that it was bad. That they had no, it was really good. I was just no, 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 like, no. That they, I, they had to deal with in the movie. Oh yeah, it was like it's because it's it's focused heavily on racism. Oh, and oh, you yeah, know, then that's bad, black yeah. black oh. families moving into an all white neighborhood and how that you know because it they the first it's like the first black families moving into Compton when Compton was actually still all white. Oh, that's oh nice. wow, that's yeah. Kind of cool. So that's, okay. that's how it starts off. And then it shows like all the stuff that this family has to deal with. But like they throw in the supernatural element with the, the malevolent forces that are in the home. It all ties in together, but I don't want to get too deep into it and give away yeah, like no, no, the no, entire no, no, no. plot. But it's it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> like, so I up, yeah, we ended up binging it and like three days but we had to take a break after a couple after the fourth episode because i was like oh my god i was like hey kid, hey, kid. Hot flashes. i'm like that just that just killed me inside Whoa. <laughs> Mel, you getting subject killed matter. inside that don't sound subject like matter well, i was like oh my god no it was bad it was it was good it was so it was so bad it was good I believe I hate it. Like the, the scene, the things, the images I'm thinking of. It was just like it was so awful, but you know it's stuff that happened, and it was just like, oh my god, these poor people, just leave them alone. <laughs> well, 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 Kate, you guys, it is coming upon. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, we we took up enough time. We took up enough time. Your time. It was so fun. <laughs> We appreciate this very much. You know, I gotta go back to go back to my real life of cooking and cleaning and taking care of the family. Being mom and wife. Honorable work. Honorable yeah. work. Yeah. My the new job role. that doesn't stop despite COVID. Exactly. True. Yeah. But thank you so important. much. And thank uh you. that was awesome. And I'll, let's keep in touch. Yeah, yes, we'll have you on definitely. again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have bye a fantastic bye. evening. Bye bye. Bye, we'll talk to you, you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. And uh, with that being said, that was another great, fantastical episode. Uh, Mel, what do you think? I'm glad she came on. Um, she's done a lot of great work. 
and yeah. it doesn't even you know i don't even care if it's even all about the horror stuff or not just you know great guest great person so it's always a good time when they actually you know can get the time to come on and talk with us for sure you know we uh, we love great conversation and when we get to have that with somebody that was in films we love and tv shows we love um it makes it, it, makes, it, it makes it all, all worth what we do all the better it make, makes it all the better J Dub is sitting over there in excitement. His knees are shaking together. He's so excited. He can't wait to hear this episode. He wanted, right? yeah, he, he was interested in, in it because of the, the, the James Spader. I know. Uh, I had so to he, give. He's such a fan of James Spader and Boston Lego. I'm such not a fan of James Spader that I actually brought up not liking him in front of somebody that liked him, that worked with him. That's how much <laughs> of not a fan I am of James Spader. I would like to say that. Um, uh, Jason Momoa is like Brandon Lee on steroids <laughs> and if I was a conspiracy theorist I would say that maybe the the Cosby daughter that's married to Jason Momoa and BC himself Bill Coyne with Billy Co William Cosby William Cosby <laughs> the third would uh do some voodoo, some black magic, some some satanic rituals, and um, then get fired off of the Cosby Show for it. <laughs> angel Heart, do some Angel Heart type stuff with the devil, with Deval, Bobby the Devil De Niro doing it big. And um, I don't know. All I know is that there's got to be some explanation for the success of fucking uh, your boy. What's his name? James Spader. No, the one who we got I got beef with. Oh, Jason Momoa. I can't even I don't even remember his name. That's how deep deep the beef is. But um I was thinking up when she was talking about that, I was thinking that I'm like, you know, Brandon Lee, one of the most handsome people of all time on film. Uh those the, those looks wouldn't have went away. Um and it's almost like uh, Jason Momoa is, almost has that look. You know, I'll give, I'll give Jason Momoa credit. You know, he's got a very handsome look. He's got a little bit of the caveman thing going, the caveman look, like from the from those commercials. But he does but have with, with the cross of a hippie, the hippie vibe. It's fake hippie. I bet he ain't no real hippie. He's just faking the funk. <laughs> or you is the hate I mean? that deep? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wonder. I, you know, I. Who the, the the Cosby girl must know where the bodies are. That's all I gotta say about Jason Momoa. <laughs> or like, I don't know what the story is. She there, there's something up with that that situation. But there's uh, such a big age difference between the two of them too. She's like she's got at least twenty something years on him. Well, that's what I mean. It's like, uh, and I believe in love being doesn't need an age. Yeah, I, the, the temptation, the temptation of being Jason Momoa and Jason Momoa is a dude that could. could I mean, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't kick him out of bed either. He's a dude that could walk into McDonald's right now. Any McDonald's. Let's go classier. He'll walk into any Wendy's right now and, and point and anybody that he points at. And I don't even say 50. I'd even say 50% of the guys, anybody that he points at, and he says, let's go for, let's go out in my car for like 15 minutes. He goes, like, why don't you come out and help, help relieve me of the pressures of life in the car? <laughs> They're going to go out there with them. You know what I mean? That's the vibe I get. So with M Momoa being like that, I don't know. I just feel I, you could, could only imagine how many women throw themselves at Momoa every day. Oh, I'm sure. I, I mean, even even when he's at a convention, I you know, and doesn't have his wife in tow. You know, I bet, like, gonna, I bet she put like what the chat. There's like a chastity belt around his pee knuckle. Yeah, it's like the like like the like a like condom, <laughs> like he's got like a chastity no, sock. Like electri electrified fence underwear. He's got know, a like Jason box. Momoa. Jason Momoa has a chastity sock. Chastity sock belt is strapped around his pee knuckle. <laughs> So he died when he goes to conventions and shit, nobody, you know, he's not allowed to slip it out of the fucking sock and put it in anybody. Yeah, it's only, it only you know, he only has enough 
space to move and that's you know if he has to go pee or something but otherwise i think that'd be funny if like she you go you go into jason momoa's hotel room and he's just like in a cage when he's not at like the table like <laughs> to, keep him out of, to keep him from he's having got, like a fucking bowl of kibble and a bowl of like water like he's just a fucking straight up animal he's like <laughs> he's like a half a human where like he's like chunk they give him like fish heads and fucking water <laughs> he's just <laughs> chilling in some like fucking dog cage <laughs> on the side of some like hotel room <laughs> And they're kind of, she's she's sitting on the cage counting the money, tapping her foot on the cage, on the padlock, going back and forth. I mean, that's gonna be that's gonna be stressful on a on a relationship, you know. When, her, when, she, when you guys when you have when you have that celebrity status and yeah. you're constantly you know going on different trips and whatnot because you gotta appear at this convention or that convention. I mean, I know sometimes yeah. she travels she travels with him at times. The time he was here, I don't, I doubt she was with him. She's in him. I'm, she's a, she, she rides in him like Krang, I heard. Yeah. Like, she's she in his fucking brain. Head. Like, his head's all hollowed out and she just sits in his fucking head and like, head controls her like a fucking <laughs> robot. <laughs> That's what it is. Like, I, I, My boy. I, and then you got, you know, she was married to Lenny Kravitz. Like, she's had them got, all. Yeah. She's had all the cool people. That's very, what I mean. A very good taste in, in men and realistically but, yeah, she could be the greatest person in the world but as far as i know is it's like she did she had the cosby show under her belt and i do often tell people don't ever underestimate the power of the cosby show because even though he, he he's scumbag now and you know in prison and the whole show's been tarnished like that show before he got caught doing what he was doing the cosby show it's like one of the most respectable shows ever put on TV. Cosby yeah, and that, was, and one that's of the why most he was so pissed about her doing that. Movie. Yeah, Cosby is probably one of. I can't think of another dude. Uh, color any take color out of it. Everything, any anything. I can't think of another human being outside of Mister Rogers. That's is that was as respected and looked up to as Cosby. Yeah, that's just you know that's my opinion. I could be dead wrong on that, but um, that's why it was so crazy when it flipped. Yeah, when you found that out. It's like, huh? It was like finding out Robin Williams didn't want to be alive anymore and hung himself. You know what I mean? Like, huh? What? What? It's funny. Excuse me. We, yeah. I, I was um, I was trying to find something I hadn't really watched in a long time, and I put on that movie Jack with Robin Williams and Bill yeah. Cosby's in it. Jennifer oh, is he? Says, yeah. Um, Bill Cosby is the principal of the school that Robin Williams is going to because like I don't I don't know if you're familiar with the movie but when Robin Williams is born he has he's he, old they grow he grows backwards he grows or something older. like that yeah he, he like Benjamin goes, Button yeah but reverse so like he's when he by the time he walks across the stage at graduation he's like 80 years old his, his, of, his movie's called Benjamin Belt <laughs> yeah oh too soon <laughs> well, broke <laughs> <laughs> right it was a red belt raspberry beret <laughs> um cosby is such a goon you know what i mean even before his thing he all when he played there was like a weird dark sinister side to him where he'd be the happy father but he'd give these weird looks in movies and stuff you know what i mean the weird eyes and you'd yeah, be like you doubt it you'd go there's something dark going on in there you know what I mean? And if yeah. Cos if I was a successful filmmaker and Cosby wasn't getting pounded in the ass like pudding pops, then I would I would give ca him cameos in my films all day long, dude. I would give Cam, you know, this is two bizarro worlds of him not in prison and me making big films. Right. Um, <laughs> but if that was in there rooming with our if those two things linked up, then I would I would give Cosby would have cameos in all my movies uh, if that bizarro world was to be. You know, if if we lived in a perfect world where Cosby didn't rape women and Matt Fisher was able to make Hollywood films, <laughs> right? That, that's how it would go. But you know, we live in twenty twenty one, so yeah. <laughs> <What can laughs> <you do? laughs> where everybody's where everybody's losing their shit on a daily basis. What can you do? Or what can you do about it? You know what I mean? Um, and this has yeah. been another fun episode. This has been another fun episode of the Shock Treatment <laughs> Mother Show. So. Uh, everybody go out there, uh, check out Kate Hodges' movies if you're not familiar with them. Like the, any, any of the shows, you, of course, if you're watching this 
this this this this episode or this TV episode. This will be both Shock Treatment TV and the um, the the, the audio podcast. The normal audio. You know, definitely check out Texas Chainsaw Three if you have it. I'm sure you have. And there's a gigantic body of work of TV, and I love the TV talk because I think everybody grew up with the TV. You know what yeah. I mean? So everybody's got certain shows, and depending on how much you were kind of babysat by your TV, is how much of a relationship you have with it. And the more people you you know and characters you can relate and understand and get down with and be comforted by, even. Um, so and, it, and literally going through her her catalog of work, yeah. you there's there's something for everybody. Yeah, you might catch you might catch an episode a TV show that you forgot all about, and uh, go back and watch that episode. You know, use this episode to go watch some old TV that 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 you haven't. You know, Tales from the Crypt. You know, fantastic. Tales from the Crypt season one, pretty good, pretty solid, pretty great. You got or two, three, Boston four, Eagle, and, two, three, know, four, think- fantastic as well. Then it goes yep. downhill a little bit. Yeah. But Boston Legal. We didn't ask her about uh, all the Boston theme things. She was in Blue Bloods as well. Yeah. Another Boston theme show. Yeah, that, and that was something I had written down to ask about too. But I, I was all wrapped up with the whole James Spader. And the, the episode that she was in was hysterical because of the dolls. Because, you know, she did, they're like Barbie dolls, but they, the clothes that they have are like whorish for six year olds. Uh, I, I I I won't speculate that I heard that Barbie dolls were found in the in the trailer of James Spader, but well, William Shatner was having fun with no, them. I'm joking. Character. That was jokes. That was jokes because I felt like that could be a problem. I, I wouldn't. You never know. Shatner's the dude. Shatner's the man. I always have. I don't even like Star Trek, but I got respect for Shatner. Yeah. Um I, Outside of killing his wife off, of course. But outside outside of that, I got other respect for the Shat guy, <laughs> for the Shat man. Uh, Tony Moran uh, of a previous episode talks a little talked a little Shat on the Shatner. So um, Shatner's just a dude that don't give a fuck. That's my take on him at all. Yep. Got away with murder. Why would he care anymore? Everybody exactly. loves him. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, hell yeah. He's he, whatever he wants to do, he does. He fucking want to be a singer. He's a singer now. Want to be a stand up? He's a stand up. Hey, he's if David Hasselhoff can be a singer, anybody can. He's one of those. He's one of those celebrity icons that are so huge that no matter what they want to do, they'll be able to attempt it, and there will be people that will follow it. Yep. You know, it's just the way it is. Um, what can you do? So, with that being <laughs> said, with that being said, we wish everybody a happy night, happy days, happy trails, and we'll catch all y'all on the next episode of shock treatment with Mel and Marty.